We're now going to go into a group of speakers on standards and certification, something that's high on everybody's mind uh, that's in this field. Our first speaker is Earl Lawrence, who is the executive director of the FAA's Aircraft Certification Service, where he's responsible for type certification, production approval, airworthiness certification, and continued airworthiness of the US civil aircraft fleet, including commercial and general aviation activities. He oversees a professional workforce of more than 1,300 employees in uh, working at FAA headquarters in DC, 35 field offices across the US, and two international offices located in Belgium and Singapore. Uh, before uh, being named to executive director in 2018, he was the executive director of the Unmanned Aircraft Systems Integration Office, uh, responsible for the facilitation of all regulations, policies, and procedures required to support the safe integration of UAS into the NAS. He played a fundamental role in establishing, leading, and successfully operationalizing this new organization. He was also previously manager of the FAA's Small Airplane Directorate, where he managed airworthiness standards, continued operational safety policy and guidance for small aircraft, gliders, light sport aircraft, airships, and balloons. And before the FAA, <laughs> poor Earl's gonna have the longest uh, introduction, he was VP of Industry and Regulatory Affairs for EAA here in Oshkosh and managed the Government Affairs Office uh, in Oshkosh in DC before that, he worked for Rockwell Rocketdyne, first as a rocket engine mechanic, and then a, ma a manufacturing engineer on the International Space Station. Um, please welcome Earl Lawrence. Thank you. All that means is I can't keep a job. Uh, it's great to be here. Um, it's great to be in Oshkosh. I hope you enjoy this week. It's always a fabulous week to see everything out there and learn so much from each other, and I think that's what this is all about. And I, I really do appreciate you inviting the FAA to this, this conference. Um, if you're going to be developing these aircraft and being operating them with passengers on board, um, I'm your unwanted partner. Um, you ha and I do mean partner. Um, we are a partner, um, but you know, you're stuck with us. Uh, you have to take us along the journey. And taking us along the journey can be a difficult task. And I was listening this morning and they're saying you know, yesterday that was, don't mean to get you down. And this morning, don't mean to get you down. I won't get you down today, but we will share a little bit about reality and the things that we all have to uh, deal with if we're going to be introducing um, these new aircraft into service. Um, we all know yesterday was uh, a milestone, 50th anniversary of landing on the moon, and um, I thought it was uh, appropriate. One of my uh, favorite quotes is from Werner von Braun, and it says, we can lick gravity, but sometimes the paperwork is overwhelming. I represent the paperwork. Um, the FAA is, is really um, used to new technologies. Um, I, I get a little disappointed sometimes when they say, well, the FAA doesn't, you know, doesn't understand or doesn't know how to deal with a, a new technology. If we could manage to uh, certify a 787 um, on an all composite electric aircraft, yes, it has turbine engines, but the whole system's electric. The, 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 everything that went into that thing was new and unique, and yes, we had some issues, uh, we had some issues, the partnership in between us and Boeing. Um, but look at all the various technologies that were introduced and, and putting an aircraft like that into commercial service that is carrying millions of people um, every year around our planet. Um, the, to say that the FAA is not used to technology is a bit of a misnomer. Um, we are. And um, when dealing with us, one of the things you really have to remember is everything is about safety, um, particularly um, with new innovations. And, you know, that's one of the things that you can do for us, and it's been read back to me a couple of times when I was running the unmanned aircraft office. There was a certain large international organization that came in to meet with me. Fourteen people showed up. Thirteen of them were lawyers. One of them was their ops guy. I said, next time show up with 13 engineers and operators and bring one lawyer. They listened. They turned it around. But I bring that up to say that really don't care about your business case, don't really care how much money you're gonna make, 
um, it affects how we, your operation affects what we need to look at. But that's what we care about. What are the safety issues that we have to look at to make sure all the risks are mitigated? So when you come to us, start with safety. That is our focus. That's what all our regulations are built around. And um, I'll say that when I was on the other side and coming in, if you always come in with safety, that's how you're going to, quote, win your arguments. It's not about winning the arguments. It's about moving forward and mitigating risks. But there will be disagreements. And if you keep focusing on showing that your way of doing something, your way of designing a product will address the safety issue, it will come out for the best for your interest and, and allow you to move forward with your design. One of the new challenges that we have in this area um, really isn't aircraft certification. We know how to certify aircraft. These aircraft aren't that much different as you're just looking at history. We've been building <clears throat> vertical lift uh, uh, aircraft for m decades. We have lots of people on our staff that understand and have been working on vertical lift and understand the problems of vertical lift. We know that's not where the struggle is. I said it's all about safety, right? Well, a lot of the things that you're looking for and you're coming to us and companies are coming to us are they're looking for us to change the way the operation is conducted. We're talking about, well, I don't want a pilot to have to have a, uh, <clears throat> that certificate, and I'm, I'm automating this item, and I want to go operate in this airspace, and I want to move around, and it's really what we like, try, like to talk about. It's, it's the safety of, an ent of the entire system, and we are not good at that at the FAA. As I says, we, we are a series of what we call titanium silos. Um, we have aircraft certification, we have flight standards, we have air traffic, we have airports, and we don't talk to each other very well. And a lot of the new technologies that are coming in are focused on, on the need to mitigate risks in all of those areas, not just one area. So my engineers want to mitigate every one of the risks of your operation all in the design. Flight Standards wants to mitigate every single one of your risks in the pilot and uh, the, the operation uh, approvals of your aircraft. Um, air traffic is going to put you out and keep you away from everybody and they'll mitigate all the risks by not letting you fly over anybody. You can see the trend and, and having to bring us all together is really uh, the challenge. So um, having discussions like this is, is truly a, a great opportunity to recognize that and to say that the FAA is working very hard um, to make sure that we are talking to each other and we are working uh, as a group. And I think there's some really great examples of that so far. One of the things that we've uh, started to inst institute is uh, agreements with companies that come in and are moving this to commercial viability. That includes signatories um, of the executives across every one of those silos. So we're sitting down and we're committing to working with you as one group and early and often. Now this, uh, the title of this, this area was standards and certification. Um, things that are very much um, to my heart. Um, I think a lot of you knew there's, I, I, there's several people in this room that equally uh, spend as much time working on our part 23. The new part 23 is not the answer to all your problems, but it is a good example of where we want to move forward from a policy and a regulatory standpoint. It is the example of what are we trying to do. Um, what are some of the key things in, in that, that regulation that's been out there for a couple of years now? One, we, we established risk levels. There's one, two, three, and four. Now, they're associated with the number of people on board but there was a lot of time and effort internationally to figure it out. We were working on things like stall speeds and, and you know, crashworthiness. There was all kinds of different ideas of how we were going to establish a level of risks. Um, actually, it was EASA that came in and said it's real simple. It's the number of bodies that are on board that can, you know, if there's a fat fatal crash, that's, how, that's, that's the level of risk. Um, we've extended those level of risks into it, and that's what we call our continuum. And what we are dedicated to, and what Part 23 says, is we are dedicated to matching our level of regulatory oversight to the level of risk of your operation. 
And I think we have evidence of that. For those of you who fly experimental aircraft, we don't spend very much time on you. It's an experiment. Go to have your experiment. Enjoy your experiment. Learn from the experiment. As you work up into areas that the public expects us to assure a certain level of safety, we're going to have more involvement. And that's what those levels are about. And that was one of the key things in Part 23. And we are dedicated to expanding that. And I know um, folks um, like Wes Ryan have been here before, and they've explained things, um, how we, we have various levels of safety in our, our approach. So if it's completely unmanned and you're going to operate it out in a farm field, we're going to have a lot less touch, um, a lot less oversight as you work your way up um, in the operations and the number of, of people that would be exposed to those risks. We're going to increase our oversight. Um, that is something that's in 23. Another thing that's in Part 23 is the ability to use industry consensus standards. And I know SAE is going to uh, speak a little bit, but that is a key thing for all of us um, to recognize. The use of industry consensus standards gives us one huge benefit. We bring in the experts in the field from anywhere in the world to sit down and put their memories, their thoughts on a piece of paper and says, if you do it this way, that is going to be the best way to address a particular design issue and a, a particular approach. Um, that is invaluable to the agency to have that brain trust, and, and we do participate in that. And I'll, I'll tell you now, um, I, one of the things that I've changed when I came into aircraft uh, uh, certification is we are establishing an industry consensus standards um, office um, with uh, managers about uh, to be an executive. It was about ready to be announced. I hope in the next uh, month or so um, who that will be. Um, but that office will be focused on nothing but working with groups like SAE and ASTM and IEEE and just all the different groups uh, of, of folks to uh, establish consensus standards and making sure you're getting the support you need. Um, another thing that, um, you know, Part 23 did is change the mindset of, of my staff uh, across the board to understand that we're trying to be flexible. And I, I like to bring this up. The strength requirement, the G load requirement for a light sport aircraft is actually higher than it is for a Part 25 aircraft. But the level of oversight that the FAA imposes is quite a bit different, isn't it? Okay? And, and you know, we, wings can't fall off, right? That's the key thing. That's the safety issue. Um, but it does go back to how much time do we spend verifying that? You know, I can, you can put sandbags, flip it upside down, put sandbags on the wing, take a picture, and we say, good. Is that good enough for the new, um, what, new Airbus or Boeing? No. You know, obviously we're going to spend a whole lot of time. The requirement is the same G load as it is for a Part 23 aircraft. But again, it goes back to how much time we spend. That. So keep that in mind when you're looking at certifying these things. We're going to spend more time in the areas. Um, the higher um, exposure that there will be to the people operating these aircraft and people not just operating it, but under the operation of these aircraft. Um, couple other things. Um, one of the things that we've done in aircraft sort of also to help you all out um, and to answer questions. Obviously, these are new things and we don't necessarily have what we call a cert basis established. So we have appointed a gentleman and he's here all week, Peter White, and he is head of our innovation office. And it is his job and his staff's job to work with each and one of, of you to discuss before you're getting to an application of a type certificate. So you don't even know yet, I'm still, I'm more than an experiment. I'm working on my business plan and I'm moving on, but I'm not quite sure yet ready to, you know, sign that statement and says, this is the, this is the aircraft I'm gonna go certify. But I have a whole bunch of questions um, for aircraft certification. I wanna understand that. Um, him and his office, and we, you can connect up with him sometime this week if you're looking to do that. Um, it, it is assigned to do just that. And his job is to go out throughout the FAA and bring all the right people in to assist you. Um, that, and then working with all of the various other associations out there, the things that we're focusing on, on getting some cert bases established. 
We also work internationally. Um, don't always have the same philosophy. What I just laid out to you that we, we will use a safety continuum. We will not do the same level of oversight to everybody. We are not going to treat everything as a transport aircraft is not the same philosophy worldwide. Um, and so we're going to have to deal with those differences. Um, there are still a lot of folks that want to go to the highest, quote, the highest level of safety. Well, what does that mean? That means the most involvement possible from the agency. We're looking to balance out the involvement of the agency, because remember I said the requirements are the same, but the involvement you'll have from us will vary. Um, lots of pretty pictures and work, uh, and work have been done, and FAA doesn't do any of that. Um, and you'll get to see some of those from folks but it is our job to put the interest of the general public into your operation and to reflect that. Um, remember that is always a continuous um, process. Can any of you tell me what the acceptable level of safety to the US public, and remember Congress is the reflection of that, of the representatives of them, is gonna find acceptable for uh, a vertical lift over uh, aircraft over over their their particular district, okay, zero. I, I don't know. I, I'm I'm gonna say that's the the fun job I have to balance out. And so when you're when we're working together, understand that that's where we're coming from. Um, we appreciate your designs. We know you do the work and that you have the knowledge um, behind it. We are trying to balance in um, what are the expectations of the, of the taxpayers that we work for um, and their representatives as, as we bring this forward. Um, you solve the problems. Um, and I, I think that's another reason when, and I'm glad to see um, SAE here and presenting, um, using the industry bodies, as I mentioned, is key to you solving the problems. Where I see things slow down is when the companies decide that they want to keep it close to themselves and be the only ones that know how to solve the problem because it's their market benefit. We will support that. That is not FAA's role. Um, but the industry will move a lot quicker um, and it's a lot easier for us to move quicker when it's an open process and people are sharing the information. Um, I was asked to speak for, for 20 minutes. I think we're going to um, do Q&A afterwards. Are we doing it as a group, as, as a group afterwards? So those are some of the thoughts that I wanted to leave you with. Um, they come down to, yes, we are open for business. You've heard probably me say that and others have said that in the past. Um, the FAA will, does want to support your, your project. Um, we have the resources put in place to support that. And um, it, the, sometimes the paperwork is overwhelming. Um, and, but the, uh, the reason for that, I think we all understand, is uh, because we have that job of representing the American public and their representatives in, in your project because you will operate over their, their heads and they will be getting on board the, your aircraft. Um, and that's the balance we're trying to, to achieve. So safety first, safety always. Um, and I look forward to getting an opportunity to fly some of your aircraft someday. Um, I, I need, I like to add models into my logbook. So um, thank you very much. Uh, I'm, I look forward to the Q&A afterwards. Uh, well, I'm sure it'll be a, a, a fun time. All right, thanks. <laughs>